In the previous USTA tutorial, we saw how to add some controlled unpredictability to our sequence through the variation index and range parameters. However, we saw that the pitch values went all over the place, giving us some notes that were clearly out of key. Today we will see how to tame this behavior through USTA's quantization options. So by default, USTA's pitch voltages are quantized to the 12-tone chromatic scale that we can see both in the LED arc and in the notes displayed here on the dashboard. This is the smallest interval we can get, like the midi grid on a piano roll. Even we can fine-tune every stage by cent increment, like we saw in the first tutorial. There can be smaller intervals, but we will see them later on. Now we want to state that it is possible to work only with some notes through the root and scale options. So first, let's set up a chromatic scale from C to C. Now we must enter the track menu and check the root and scale parameter. The root parameter defines our root note and the scale defines the intervals that we will calculate from that note. It is a scale mask that will filter the values entered in the red CV layers. Nothing happens if we change our root note while keeping the chromatic scale because the 12 chromatic scales are all the same. If we select another scale though, things will get more interesting. You will see that the 12 note will be approximated to their closest to scale note. It will get even more noticeable with pentatonic scale, where only 5 out of 12 notes are in use. With a major pentatonic scale, the root change becomes more dramatic. Now you may ask two questions. First, what happens to our 12 notes? And then, how does Usta approximate the notes of our key? The two questions are very close to each other. Let us start with the first one. Usta's quantization is non-destructive. It means that even if it changes how our sequence sounds, the notes we enter at the beginning are still there, as we can see from the stage arcs. This allows us to always get back to our original intentions. You can think of it as a philosophical distinction between the musician and the instrument. The instrument has no power to permanently override the musician's choices. We can note this behavior in composition mode. As a matter of fact, the quantization always occurs only when Usta is playing, so if we edit our pattern live, we can be sure that the outcome is in tune, even if we dial a wrong note. However, the wrong note is still there because it reflects our arbitrary choice. If we stop our sequence and enter the composition mode, we can hear all the notes that we really entered. You can notice the difference between what is playing and what is in the USTA. An excellent application of this behavior will be clearer in a second. On to the second question. How does USTA actually quantize? So we have four options listed in this menu item. Near up searches for the closest note in the scale, starting from the first interval above. If no interval matches, it checks the first interval below. If nothing matches, it goes back upwards, and so on until it finds a note in scale. Near down follows the same approach, but starts from the first interval below.
On the other hand, up searches for matching notes only above the note we entered, and down does the same, but only below it. We may have a clearer grasp with the faster sequence. These non-destructive quantization options become especially meaningful when we play with the variation control that we saw in the previous episode. Let us then increase the variation index and range for some stages. Let's say this one, this one, and these ones. And then I'll do the same. You will see that the randomized notes are always in tune, and if we revert our sequence back to chromatic, we will have a complete chaos. Remember that even if we choose a quantization scale, we can still fine-tune our individual stages as it is an arbitrary operation that needs to be preserved like this. If we have a fine-tuned stage, every variation over that note will retain the scent offset. In the scale parameter we can see plenty of them that you can see explained in detail in our manual. However, if you cannot find the right one for you, you can program your own, then recall it through the same menu voice. All you need is a computer and an SD card reader. Turn off your system or disconnect it from the power grid and then unscrew the USTA to access the SD card on the back. Push it to remove it, then plug it into an adapter and connect it to your computer. You can create up to four custom scales. On your computer, open a text editor like Atom and create a CSV file. It must contain only four lines, one per scale. Every line must have 12 digits, one per semitone. The first is the root, the second is the flat second, and so on. Each digit must be either one or zero. One means that the semitone is active and zero that it is skipped. Use a semicolon to separate the digits. Remember to avoid any space and avoid the semicolon at the end of each scale. Even if you plan to use only one scale, you must fill all the four lines, perhaps by filling them with ones. Once you are done, save the file as 12scales.csv and paste it to the SD card's root. Plug the SD card back in your USTA and boot the system. Now USTA will automatically read your custom scales and you can access them here. User 1, user 2, 3 and 4. And this is how to quantize our 12 tone chromatic scale. But no one said that our octave must have only 12 semitones. If we choose to preserve the perfect octave in our music, which corresponds to an exact doubling of the frequency, we can fill this interval with as many notes as we want. So dividing into 12 uh, spaced intervals is an incredible hack that allows us to play in all the tonalities without needing to retune our instrument, but it is just the tip of the iceberg, to be fair. We may shoot a dedicated frap talk about scales and tunings, but for now we will limit ourselves saying that with Usta you can set every track to work with other octave divisions, 15, 19, 22 and 24, which correspond precisely to quarter tones or half of a semitone. Since all the intervals we obtain with this division are equal, we call them EDOs, equal divisions of the octave. To change this setting, enter the track menu, scroll until you find the tone per octave menu item, and select the equal division of the octave that may suit you. We have dedicated the root and scale option for every EDO because other octave divisions carry other scale possibilities. So, for example, I set 22 and uh, 
Now I must scroll down until I find the root for the 22 Edo, which can be this G kind of flat, and then I can choose its scale. You may notice that the tuna dropped down by a couple of octaves. When we select other octave divisions, we also reduce our voltage range because we are increasing the number of nodes within one octave. According to its architecture, the Usta sequencer outputs 120 nodes, which are 10 octaves of 12 semitones each. If an octave contains more than 12 semitones, the range will shrink down accordingly. For example, if we play with quarter tones, we have twice as many notes per octave. So the overall range will be of 5 octaves, as you can see, for example, by transposing this sequence. This happens because we introduce other EDOs at a fairly advanced development stage, where Usta's architecture was already defined to output 120 notes. And if we go back to 12 Edo, the sequence will revert to its original value. So this is shifted up by quite some octaves. So let's return down to our original state. You can also see that when we return to another octave division, Usta will also load the scale that we associated to it. In this case, the Dimixolydian scale. Please note that these settings are per track, so if you want to play with the same Edo across all of your tracks, you may want to take advantage of the Set All button and assign the same octave division to all of your tracks. You can also assign other octave divisions to different tracks for more experimental music. For example, you may want a harmonic structure in 12 Edo and a melody that plays microtonally against it to create a sense of contrast. Another useful option in the track menu is the CV range, where we can choose if our CVA and CVB outputs should work with unipolar range from 0 to 10 volts or a bipolar range from minus 5 to 5 volts. These options work either with CV or row voltages. Now, of course, if we set our CV to bipolar, we will offset our melody down by 5 volts, so we may want to transpose it or, even better, fine-tune our oscillator to a zero volt, which in this case will be halfway through our whole range instead of being lower down. We can write four custom scales per each octave division in the same way we described for the 12 Edo. Again, we must enter as many 0 or 1 as the total number of intervals, so 15, 19, 22 or 24, and then we will save the files with these names. This is what our root folder looks like when we populated it with all the five custom scale files. Again, we can access our custom scales within each root and scale parameter, so at the end of our preset scales, we, can, we will find the user 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we can select them like this. The same way for the 19, 22 and 24. Of course we must make sure to activate the corresponding Edo. We have said that 12 is not the only possible octave division and we also said that Usta gives us other equal divisions. But are there non-equal divisions? As a matter of fact, yes. Many tuning systems and temperaments have asymmetrical octave divisions to have more perfect sounding intervals. This might be the topic of a forthcoming FRAP talk. But as we said, we can fine tune the stages individually. For example, we can select this stage and fine tune it. And the fine tuning will prevail over the quantization. However, what if we want to have all our second intervals, say, 4 cents sharper? 
we can write a custom temperament like we wrote our custom scales. Let us then open our text editor and write four lines of custom temperaments. For a 12 tone temperament we must enter a row of 12 numbers that express the deviation in cents from the 12 Edo, like this. Use a semicolon to separate the digits. Remember to avoid any space and avoid the semicolon at the end. We must fill all the lines for the file to be read, so if we need less than four temperaments, we can populate the other lines with zeros. If we want to temper another octave division, we must add as many numbers as the Edo we are referring to. Once we are done, we must save the CSV file with these names if we temper an octave division by 12, 15, 19, 22 or 24. And then we must paste the file into our SD card root. And this is what it looks like once populated with all the custom temperament files. Once we install the SD, Usta will automatically load the temperaments when booting. We can access them through the Tones per Octave menu item. Once we pass the 24 Edo, we will see the custom temperaments for 12, 15, 19, 22 and 24. So since our octave is no longer equally divided, we can choose whether the temperament is absolute or relative. If absolute, it starts from the note corresponding to zero volt. If relative, it transposes with the root note, which we can define through the corresponding menu voice. Choosing whether the temperament is absolute or relative is a parameter that affects the project as a whole, so it is stored in the project menu. This parameter will be stored in the current project. By default, 0 volt is C. However, you can choose if you prefer to work starting from A in the project menu. Now Usta's 0 volt is A and the value in pitch mode will start from A. So this is the end of the fourth part of our Usta tutorial. I hope you found this useful and I will see you next time for part 5.